Hey everybody, James with Love My Pups. Today's video is going to be on the pie gene and uh, <clears throat> the things that you can do to get pie or not get pie in your litter and how the genetics work. And I want to introduce you to a fantastic app that one of my customers put together. It's available for both iOS and Android. And if you go to the app store and you put in Coat Color Bakia, you will find this app. And uh, I'm just going to bring this up here. We're, we're going to do a whole separate video just on this app, but I'm going to hold it up in front of the screen here. So this is the app right here. I love this thing. So what you can do is, is you can put in gen genetics of both parents. So what we've got here is we've got a, a I'm going to put this back to a regular, not blue dog, uh, that has, that has not, doesn't have merle, so I'll get rid of the merle. And uh, look at that, it shows you exactly what you're going to get on the top there, the color of the dog. And you can change things, for instance, let's make this AT, AT dog. And there you show the tan point showing up on the dog. So you can do that. Then you can do next, and then you can put in the information on the mum. And so let's make this mum a blue dog as well, so it'll be little d, little d. And there she is, she's a straight blue dog. And then next, and now it shows you, it takes a few seconds here, and uh, now it shows you all of the different dogs that you'd expect to get from that combination with their colors. Look at that. I mean, there's, there is just, I mean, there's, because of that mix of those dogs, it is, I mean, I love this app. It is so easy to use and it's accurate, it's correct. Haven't made any mistakes for me whatsoever at all. So, um, I, this is, I'm gonna do a whole video just on this. This thing's great. I mean, all of this genetics that people have been asking me questions about all the time um, are all sorted out by doing this one app right here. I mean, it's fantastic, and I mean, it's free. Um, so, you know, you should go get this. I mean, don't, don't be asking me questions on genetics anymore. If you wanna know what your dogs are gonna do, there's the answer right there. I mean, it's fabulous. Anyway, so enough of that. Let's talk about pie. So, what is a pie dog? Well, we're not just talking Frenchies here, we're talking all dogs. So a pie dog is a dog that is, has a white background and then has blotches, large blotches of color, relatively small, continuous blotches of color. That's a pie. As opposed to a merle. A merle is a different look. A merle is a blotching of colors Typically, you know, in certain areas, pie tends to be, you know, if you've got a pie dog, it tends to have more this kind of a blotches of color on it. And it, it may vary, but they're, they're nicely defined areas. And the color of the pie will be dependent on the base color of the dog. You know, it could be fawn, it could be honey pied, honey colored, it could be blue, it could be chocolate. It could be brindle. It could be lilac. And it could be merle. So basically, there's lots of other colors that you can have with a pie, but it is a white background that has these blotches of color on it. Okay. So, what determines whether you get a pied puppy? And the answer is, is that both parents have to at least have a copy of the pie gene, the spotting gene. And it's a capital S if they've got it, and it's an N if they don't. So if we took two dogs, and they both were carriers, by the way, to express pied, you have to have two copies. Your genetics have to be that. That's what you have to be to be a pied dog. If you're SS, you're a pied dog. If you're an SN, you're a pied carrier. And if in that field you're an NN, you're not pied at all, right? Okay, so let's look now at what the various different possibilities are of how you would or wouldn't get a pied dog. So let's breed these two dogs together. So here's the pied square. We do this all the time. Here's the punnet, <clears throat> and we'll put one of the dogs on the top, one of the dogs on the bottom, 
Then right in that square there, we get a pied dog. This square here, we get a pied carrier. This square here, we get a pied carrier. This square here, we get no pied whatsoever. So we get one quarter pied in that scenario. On average, one quarter. If you had four dogs, you'd expect one dog to be pied if you put two pied carriers together. Okay, so now let's change this and let's make this a pied dog on the top to a pied carrier on the side. So here is the pied dog on the top, two copies. That's a pied dog, pied carrier. This dog doesn't show pied, this one does. So now what do we get? It changes this rank here. So now we get that. So now we get one half pied, one half pied carriers, okay? And then let's put one more scenario. Let's put this dog over here as not being pied at all. No pied in that dog whatsoever at all. What do we get? We get a pied carrier. We get a pied carrier. And so we get all pied carriers. Nobody shows pied at all. So you can absolutely control how the pied gene is expressed. If you, and I like pieds, I think, you know, so breeders typically not so crazy about pieds and not quite sure why. Um, I can tell you this, when I have a litter of dogs and I have a one or two, you know, if I have a litter that I've bred a not a pied carrier to a pied carrier and I get, you know, eight puppies and two of them are pied, those two pied dogs tend to be uh, uh, adopted first. So I like pied, I like paint horses, I think they're splash, flashy, I like their colorings. So for me personally, I like pied, and I've got lots of customers who obviously feel the same way. Breeders are concerned about it because they don't want to breed pied, but you know what, you can completely control it. If you don't like pied and you've got a dog that is pied, breed it to a non-pied dog, you will get zero pieds out of it. So you can completely control pied. So I like pied. It is a recessive gene, it takes two copies, one from each parent for it to be expressed. Now, with that being said, there are some things that you have to be careful about, about pied. So I get people who say, oh, never breed a pied to a pied. No, you can breed a pied to a pied. What you don't want to do is you don't want to have a pied puppy that has very, very little color on it. Especially no color on its ears or around its face. Because those dogs can be, have bad hearing. In fact, typically they do have uh, restricted hearing. And if they have a completely white head, they're very likely to be uh, completely deaf. In fact, I had a puppy, oh, seven years ago, um, and I didn't even realize that the puppy was deaf. It was a, it was a pied with just a little bit of coloring on the back, on the back end of its rump. A beautiful little puppy. And so uh, the people came to pick the puppy up. They called me up the next day to say, the puppy's deaf. And I said, ooh, I didn't know about that. So anyway, I took the puppy back. And uh, long story short, the next day the puppy was asleep. I came up on the puppy with a couple of uh, um, uh, saucepan lids, clang, clang, clang behind that dog, didn't move a muscle. I went up there and touched the dog and it immediately woke up. Totally deaf dog. The dog went on to have a great life. The dog's still alive. It's, it's, it's a pet dog in a home doing great. Should you breed a deaf dog? Probably not. I don't know whether that's, I don't know. See, it's one of those things that it's, it's not really hereditary condition, it's a genetic to, condition. So if you had a deaf dog that was pied and you bred it to a non-pied dog to get no pieds, I think it would be okay. I don't think you'd have deaf dogs out of it, but I might be wrong about that. But, but, uh, so, but, but the point here is, is that if you've got a pied and you want to have pied to breed it and it has plenty of color on it, if you go look at my website, I've got a guy called Rumble. So Rumble is a pied. He is a red pied carries blue with testable chocolate. So if you can look on my site for Rumble, a stud dog Rumble, you'll see a dog there that has a lot of color on him. He's got white on his chest, he's what's called an Irish pied. He's got double hooded, he's got you know, red on both sides, white down the middle. He has never produced a deaf puppy. Um, I would put him with a pied and not be worried about it. But if you have a, a two dogs that are pied, that are, are extreme pied, or eat, well, if you have a single dog that is extreme pied, when I say extreme pied, this is a dog that has almost all white on its body and very little color at all. I would not breed that to a pied carrier or a pied. I'd keep away from pied on that dog because you might run into problems. You're not going to end up with dead puppies, but you could end up with deaf puppies. 
And, and deaf puppies have got their own set of problems, you know. The, the deaf puppy that I was telling you about, that puppy is now, they sign to it. They send sign language to that dog and the dog understands sign language. So some basic things like stop, come here, sit, no, you know, those are all sign languages that they've developed over the, the first year of its life and the dog's just fine. Um, but, so the next thing is, is that I sometimes see people who say, hey, I've got a completely white French Bulldog. And white is not a color that you see in French Bulldogs, but it is a background color that you see in Pied. So whenever somebody says they've got a completely white French Bulldog, I suspect that they in fact have a Pied French Bulldog with very little color and don't realize it. And the other thing you can see in French is you can have what's called a honey pied, where you have the base color is white and the, the background color is cream. And on those dogs, or, or a very light, a very light fawn, on those colors, you can just see little bits of cream showing up on the white background. And that is, uh, that is a pied dog, not a white dog. So a totally white dog in a Frenchie, um, now you can get creams, creams come in all colors from almost white to uh, kind of an apricot color, uh, but a totally white, snow white Frenchie, I would suspect is in fact probably a pied Frenchie. Um, okay, I think I've probably covered everything that I want to say about pied. Um, so how do you get the other, well let's talk a little bit about how you get the other colors in pied. So you've got a dog that is SS. If it's SS, that's a pied dog. Now, if you want those patches to be blue on the dog, then it needs to be DD. If you do that, then it's gonna be a blue pied dog. If you end up getting BB, then it'll be a chocolate pied dog. If the dog is no brindle, AY, AY, it'll be a fawn colored dog, no brindle, KY, KY. That'll be a fawn uh, patches. If the dog is KBR, then that dog will be a brindle pied. If that dog is a blue with a copy of brindle, it'll be a blue brindle pied. That's chocolate, sorry. There we go, a little, little dilution, right? If the dog is both BB and DD, then it will be a lilac brindle pied, or just a straight lilac if it's like that. Hey, the great thing about this is that app that I showed you, you can play around with all this stuff and you can see exactly what the results are and get it right every time and not have to have myself or somebody else's expertise to tell you what you're gonna get. Um, so pies, love them. Love them, love them, love them. Uh, lots of color. And I tell you another great thing about a pie, if you've got a brindle dog that carries a pie gene, then breed it back to another dog that has pied or a pied carrier. And that way you can get some brindle pieds and in my world, brindle pieds uh, are a lot more sellable than a straight brindle dog. A straight brindle dog in the Frenchie world is like a thousand, fifteen hundred dollar dog, versus a brindle pied Frenchie is maybe a three thirty five hundred dollar dog. So you can mitigate the problems with brindle by getting pied in there. So that's another useful tip. Okay, so there we go. Remember, coat. I'm going to do a whole video just on this coat color and put in the name Bakia because you won't find it. It's new and it doesn't have any, hardly any reviews yet. So put in Coat Color Bakia and that will get you that Coat Color calculator. Try it out, make some comments on it. I think it's fantastic. Again, thank you for watching my videos. Uh, if you like them, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. If you want other things to be uh, uh, addressed, tell us about that in the comments. If we're idiots, let us know that too. And remember, the most important thing is be nice to your doggies. Bye everybody.